Disclaimer. Before starting this video, I have something very important to say. The ants that I'm going to feature is not Polarachis rustalata, as I am calling them throughout this whole video. They are instead of the species Polarachis livigata. This I realized just after editing this entire video, therefore adding this disclaimer afterwards. There was a misunderstanding by the seller who trusted his supplier's ID capabilities. He then sold them over to me as Polarachis rustalata, therefore I believed him without any question. This teaches both you and me a lesson that you should always double check the species on arrival and not blindly trust the seller. Thank you. What's up scavengers, and Scandinavia here. In this video you will see how I set up my custom built vivarium and a long awaited introduction of my Polarachis rustalata colony, which I actually unboxed in my last video. Here, go check that out to get updated on the subject. But now, let's build a vivarium. First of all, I want to say that this glass container is homemade, as in I made it. It is much easier than you think to make one yourself, and you can get the exact dimensions you want. Very nice. As you saw, I placed some plastic pieces on the shelf under the glass. This prevents the glass from potentially cracking from the small dust particles on the shelf. As in all bioactive vivariums, a drainage layer is needed to absorb leftover water so that the soil does not get soggy and moldy. For this, I used some common rocks and a fine black mesh, cut out perfectly. Ah, oh, so satisfying. I used two layers of mesh, again to decrease pressure on the glass, from dust particles also from the inside. Drainage layer done. Now for the substrate. I used a substrate that holds moisture fairly well, as I wanted to keep a somewhat constant humidity, but not too much humidity, because then fungi and mold would thrive. Substrate done. And now for the scape. Let's start with the main hardscape. I wanted to achieve a naturalistic look with some arboreal foraging area. Therefore, I added this troll wood, as it is called in Sweden at least. These dwindling branches will be perfect for curious ants to explore. Now, I placed out the plants. I wanted these weaver ants to have at least one place where they could weave arboreal. Therefore, I chose this tiny tree. As for the ground foliage, I used this, which is a very fast growing and good looking plant. Then, I wanted to use these white nerve plants, a fast growing plant, which have thick leaf growth and also looks really good. I also chose to use these fast and tall growing plants. A theme in this vivarium is that everything, except the small tree, is fast growing. This is in my opinion a good thing to look out for, as it is then easier to shape the landscape exactly how you want, without having to buy that much plants, as the ones you will have will spread fast. Now, when everything is planted, I placed in a hollow cork bark piece. If they wouldn't like to nest arboreal or in the ground, they have this to choose from as well. I basically wanted them to move in as fast as possible from the test tube that I'm going to put in. Therefore, I chose so many nesting variants for them. As for the offering table, or whatever you want to say, I chose this grey rock as it is very flat on the top but was still rough and good looking. I also placed in some smaller rocks and some seed husks to add more brown to the look. Then I went on to place two air plants, one in the troll wood and one in a seed husk. Oh, hey, it is actually starting to look like something. I'm so looking forward for the low foliage to really start growing. However, I did not want to show this much dirt, so I added leaf litter and some cocoa husk later on. Now it is time for the cleanup crew. This is a must in all bioactive vivariums to reduce mold and fungi growth, as well as decompose decaying leftovers from the stars in the vivarium, the ants. By the way, I want to include a disclaimer here, as I am actually going to attempt something not recommended in most situations. In this vivarium, I am going to have an Asian ant species. This means that you should really get an Asian cleanup crew as well. However, I really don't have any access to that, so I will have to resort to what I can find, aka non-Thailand native species as Thailand is where the ants come from. This increases chance of deadly parasites, diseases or anything really that the imported ants are not used to. The same thing that once happened when Europeans traveled the world and many native people died because of foreign diseases could happen here. Keeping native ants is a huge plus in this situation as they are more than well equipped to handle native diseases than what these non-native ants are. In other words, I do not recommend doing this if you are not willing to risk your colony for it. The chance of disease and parasites may be small, but it is still there. And as I said, a cleanup crew is a must in a bioactive setup. 
So, I first added some springtails, an essential to getting a bioactive setup, as they are small and reproduce very quickly. Then, I went on to adding some night crawlers. You don't want too much of these guys, as they can many times grow to huge sizes. If your ants decide to nest in the ground, these guys can accidentally destroy the nest whilst digging, and accidentally bury brood as well as some workers in the process, as they all dig around blind in the soil. However, they are really effective to breaking down decaying matter to soil, so they're also an essential essential to a healthy vivarium. I continued adding some more of the cleanup crew, this time with it being isopods. One smaller, who helps keep mold and fungi in check, and the larger ones eating leftovers in the vivarium, keeping things tidy, in other words. But now, for the main attraction, the ants. I was so excited for them moving in, that I did not hesitate with anything, and went on to putting in the square test tube that they were in. Minutes later, they were crawling around and exploring, one went up and tried the ant barrier. Phew, it worked. My man over at Nordic Ants recommended me using normal olive oil as a barrier, and well, it seemed to work great. I watched how they explored and explored all the possible crevices in the vivarium. I really really wanted them to move out of that test tube and into the vivarium, so I waited and observed them for hours, with no results. It seemed like scouts were investigating many places as real nesting places for long periods of time. However, they never moved out of the test tube that night. One essential to ant keeping is patience, so I decided to let them be for a while. The next day I watered everything, as I thought that they might think that it was too dry for them to move into the actual vivarium, but to my surprise, even with the humidity of a tropical rainforest and with beads of water on every leaf, they did not move in. Then I thought that maybe they were just hungry. I fed them some honey yesterday, but I figured that I would offer some more diluted honey, as raw honey may have been too hard to eat. On the right side of the vivarium, against the glass, I had placed a heat mat to create a slight heat gradients for them. I decided to place the tube next to that instead, if that could have been the reason for them not having moved in yet. I also fed a dubia to them that night, and the next day they had totally decapitated the head of the dubia. Okay, so they ate protein and honey, that's good news. So why weren't they moving into the vivarium? I honestly recorded far too much footage of them just walking around, as I really wanted to capture the moment when a scout finally chose the place for the nest. However, that day never came. Days turned into weeks, as I waited and waited for them to someday move out of the test tube and into the vivarium. But then, I realized what was going on, and why they were so persistent with not moving out of the test tube. Besides making really good advertisements for ant nest square test tube, they maybe did not have enough larva to build a nest. You see, arboreal ants like this polyrachis are also called weaver ants. This means that they weave their nest out of silk. Silk produced by their larva. They quite literally use their larva as hot glue guns to weave both leaves together but also to make their underground nests more sturdy. I took away the aluminium foil to see if that might just be the case. And to my surprise, they were all super still. A bit too still. My heart jumped as I obviously thought that they were all dead. However, to my surprise, after some time, they all slowly and cautiously started to move again. I figured that this had to be some sort of built-in defense mechanism for these rather adapted and special arboreal ants. When I was removing the foil from the test tube, or in this case, their nest, their nest moved around a bit, of course. This is surely an adaption to living arboreal, to freeze from the tiniest vibration. My question is, how is it useful? Fellow scavengers, please leave your theories to this odd behavior down in the comments. I have my own thoughts, but I'm actually also really interested to hear what you guys think about this behavior. Well, back to the topic. I checked inside their nest to see if they had any brood or larva. And, well, they did not. Ah, so that's why they haven't moved in. Because they couldn't. After that, the days just went by. All while the plants in the vivarium matured. The white nerve plants were doing great. None had died. And I also saw some new leaves. By the way, I'm so sorry for not knowing any plant species. I'm good at animals, not plants. Sorry. The fast-growing, crawling plant to the left had runners all over and was doing really good. The one to the right, however, did not look as good. It looked like I had accidentally chopped off too much roots for it, so many of the runners looked to be dying. Not all though, so it will recover. The air plants looked all to be fine. However, the taller plants in the back had all sogged down. If you remember, when I planted them, they were almost as tall to reach out of my vivarium, but now they were all starting to die. 
Not all of them were like this, as you will see later on, but many of them unfortunately died. This is because I actually took them from an already existing potted plant, so I probably again got too much of the roots cut off. I guess I just have to learn from my mistakes. Some weeks passed without them ever moving out. I saw less and less action outside and began to worry. Now they should definitely have enough larva to start weaving. But why? Why weren't they moving in? I decided to disturb them once more to see if they had some problems or not. And oh my god, look, they even had pupa. They had all the stages of brood. So why the hell weren't they moving in? <sighs> Scavengers, I really need your help. What should I do? How should I make them move in without stressing them too much? Or what is making them so persistent to not moving out? I've so badly wanted them to move in. I guess the colony might be too small, they could have too few larvae, or maybe something else that I have not yet thought about. Please help me with this. I really want them to get moving. I have actually had this mavarium now for some months. And yes, you guessed it, they still have not moved out. I've actually seen workers carrying other dead workers to their disposal site, a sign of a, at least fairly mature colony, who should be able to move out of the test tube. I have to say, they seem to love this square test tube, even when I'm not even moisturing it. It actually looked pretty cozy when they had built a little door on the entrance. I guess I just have to get used to a silvery object being overtaken by the plant life, because if you look at these pictures I've taken every day for some weeks, you can see that the plants are actually taking over. Awesome. Well, at least they thrive. I really hope you liked this vivarium build, as well as a proper introduction of these Asian beauties. Comment down below your theory about the strange behavior we witnessed, and also, please, your ideas on how I can get them to move without stressing them out too much. Have a good one, and I will see you scabs next time. Bye!